Philip, there, there's something I have to tell you. Well, you can tell me anything you want. No, Philip. What? What's the matter? I'm going to have a baby. idea. Folks, folks, if, if you want to call in and tell Johnny and Chelsea just how much you enjoyed their singing, uh, why don't you call in and at the same time we'll kill two birds with one stone. We'll take your generous donation to help the folks on Fifth Street. What do you say? Well, I... Come on, get over to the phones right now. We need to make that money. Oh, oh, and speaking of money, let's go to Rick Bauer over here at the Pledge Board and see how we're doing. How are we doing, Rick? Rick? Uh, hi, Nadine. What a big night, huh? Uh, Rick, how are we doing on the pledges over here? Oh, let's go to the big board, shall we? $22,000. Wow. Wow. I know, I know we can do better. Yeah, I'm sure we can do better, Rick. And I'll tell you what, we've got some incentive for you. You know, when you call in, you just might talk to some of the movers and shakers right here in Springfield. Uh, why don't we take a gander at some of the folks right here behind the scenes who are volunteering to help us out tonight. Let's see. Um, we have Billy Lewis over here, oil man and restaurateur extraordinaire. And right next to him is, uh, is his loyal assistant. That's Miss uh, Wanda Hyatt. Hi, Wanda. <laughs> and do you know some Thing, I'm going to tell you a secret. Wanda told me that it was actually her life story that they based that movie, uh, Venus Goddess of Love, on. <laughs> you better watch out, Vanna White. <laughs> oh, 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 over here, oh, over here we have two of the most generous and supportive television station owners I have ever met. I'm talking about Miss Holly Lindsay and Mr. Ross Marler. <laughs> oh, and we cannot forget to applaud the corporate giant who is making this telethon possible, helping families to help families. Of course, I am talking about Spalding Enterprises, and they're represented here tonight by um, Henry and Vanessa Chamberlain. Oh, Mr. Chamberlain, or may I call you Henry? Oh, please do. You always do in private. <laughs> <laughs> well, Henry, this must be a very big moment for you and Spalding, huh? It is, Nadine. It's a very big moment. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Spalding Enterprises is justly very, very proud of its long history of philanthropy. The Spalding Foundation and Cedars Hospital both attest to our deep interest and commitment in the people of the community. So thank you very, very much. Well said, Vanessa. 
Hello, I'm Roger Thorpe, president of Spalding Enterprises. We at Spalding appreciate your generous support of those people who lost their homes in that tragic fire. Show them how much you care. Give, and then give some more. Thank you. And thank you. Oh, oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> oh, oh, come on now, folks. We've got to keep these phones ringing, and what you have to do is call 555. Five we need to talk. Later. I'm busy. Now, Roger. <laughs> you. I knew it was you. You're the fan. You're crazy, Dana, you know that? You tried to set me up. You had everybody believing I was the fan, but it was you all along. Well, it's over, Ray. It's finally over for both of us. No. No! Get out of my way! Sit down, Roger. You have a lot of explaining to do. Want me to shut the door? Yes, please. So what's all this about? <sighs> Holly and I want to buy you out. Oh, I see. So you know. You know damn well that we know. We will make you a reasonable offer. Not interested. I didn't think you would be. After all, you didn't buy into the station as an investment. You did it for personal reasons. You think? What else could it be? Money is no longer the issue. You've got plenty of that now. Oh, you mean because I married Alexandra? Well, that'll do for starters. Just for the record, Counselor, I was already doing very well on my own. Well, then why? Why buy into WSPR behind our backs when you know very well we don't want anything to do with you? Exactly. If I'd come to you up front, you would have turned me down flat. Uh-huh. So you go to Elliot Hayes. Very nice man, very discreet. He made it possible for me to be of help to you anonymously. Help? Roger, I cannot make this any clearer. We don't want your kind of help. But where is it with you two? Why do you have to read evil intent into everything I do? Want a list? All right, look, for your information, I invested in the station to help Holly. To help Holly? Yes, to help Holly. Look, I hurt you once, okay? Very badly. This was my way of trying to make amends. Look, I knew you wanted the TV station. I knew that Ross didn't have the resources. No offense, Ross, but you don't. But you'd done me some good turns. I thought it was time that I returned the favor. Roger, you don't do favors for anybody. Now, why did you buy into the station? I told you I am not going to stand here and repeat myself. Look, if my involvement is so disturbing to you, let me remind you that from the beginning, I have been a truly silent partner. I have no plans to change that. You guys are doing a terrific job. Of course, now that my little secret is out, I might pop back in from time to time, take a look around, see what's going on, look through the books, that sort of thing, you know? What is it? Thanks, Billy. I'll tell him. You're wanted on stage. The Chamber of Commerce wants to give you a check. Ah, uh, duty calls. Is my tie on straight? Would you like me to tighten it for you? No, thanks. I'll manage. See you around, partners. Damn him! I tried to tell you. What? You are the reason he bought into WSPR and he just confirmed it. There's more to it than that. Holly, right. I will take care of Roger. You run the station. I don't think I can do that anymore. Look, Holly, I mean it. Forget Roger.
sincerely, Mr. Tyler. How about this? Let's get this right up on the big board, okay, Nadine? That is a big one. It sure is. Thank you again, Mr. Tyler. You know, this seems as good a time as any for me to make a special announcement. I'm actually here today wearing Devil two hats. Devil shorthanded. One as president back. of Spalding Enterprises, and the other as co-owner of WSPR. Well, let's hear it for our new <laughs> boss, the very generous oh. and supportive Mr. Roger Thorne. Thank, you, thank you, thank you very much. But all the praise God must really go to my two co-owners, Ross you. Mahler and Holly Lindsay. And in fact, Ross, Holly... Why don't you come join me right now and take a nice big bow, okay? I'm not going to come to you. You can uh, come to me. Well, you know what? It looks like... And you will, Roger. Uh, I don't see the neighbor. It looks like Ross and Holly will. Stay. No doubt they are backstage making sure that our telethon continues to run smoothly. So, what do you say we go to the pledge board with Dr. Rick Bowers? See how we're doing, Rick. Oh, well. Thank you, Angel. Roger. Roger. I can't tell you how excited I am that you're a partner in the television station because now maybe top management will realize what an asset I am. Well, I don't see how they can fail to miss it. Well, it's just between you and me. Ross and Holly don't always take me seriously. I don't know what it is, but it, this has been a curse that's followed me all my life. I mean, people look at me and they think because I'm I'm blonde and beautiful and I'm dumb as a dog. Well, I too have experienced a certain degree of mean-spiritedness at the hands of the denizens of Springfield. I understand. Oh. Well, anyway, listen, um... I had this great idea for a variety talk show at night that I would I would host and sing for. Did I ever tell you that I can sing? Uh, no, no, you didn't. Well, anyway, I'd love to pitch this to you over lunch on Thursday. I'm free then. Uh, how about you? Well, I'll have to check my calendar, and I'll get back to you. Excuse me. Uh, Roger, I will be looking forward to it. Waiting yeah. for you. Good. My show now is going off the air. Isn't that right, Roger? Roger, you're my... Roger, get out of my space. Roger, Roger may I speak to you for a moment? Yes, I'm... Uh, I was very touched that you remembered we used to play golf together, and I want to thank you for that beautiful set of golf clubs you gave me. Well, thank you, Henry. I'm glad you liked it. So, uh, no hard feelings? No. no. Business is business. Life goes on. I very much appreciate pragmatism in the people who work for me. I expect a great deal from you, Henry. You'll get it. Oh, and incidentally, congratulations on your marriage to Alexandra. I suppose that was in inevitable. Huh? True love, Henry. How about some impressions of our folks here in Springfield? I'm sure you'd like to see that. How about uh, how about that famous cop, Rusty Shane? Rusty Shane. Honey, I have it in a very safe place. Good, you got it. Just some Okay, okay, don't worry about it. I will give an award-winning performance. Hello? I'm operating an instinct right now. I guess we're going back to the big board. All right, let's see what we got, folks. On the big board. Here we go. Twenty-six thousand dollars. Yes. Wow, that's really good, folks. Well, we can do better. I know we can do better. Hey, coming up next, that famous New Orleans Saints star, Hampton Speak. Yes, I got it. Thank you, ma'am. And you're yes, ma'am. I hope that you're not planning to use the Spalding Telethon, which is airing on my station, to promote your shelter on Fifth Street. Well, so I never crossed my mind. Bye bye. Well, good. Hello. Hello. What is the third man named Lionel? He's called thinking I'm in love with him. Some men are just born dumb. You're getting that Freddy Krueger look. Hello? You're scaring me. One. Yes. If your name isn't Roger Thorpe, you ain't got nothing to worry about. I don't care. I'll pass the play after that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> a baby. A baby. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. We're going to have a baby. I can't believe it. Oh, God. I don't know why this is such a big surprise. I guess I just never let myself think that it was possible anymore. I didn't think I was meant to be a father. I sort of figured it was God's way of keeping me from turning into Alan with my kids. Oh, sweetheart, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. This is going to make every dream that I ever had for us come true. We are finally going to have the life together that we always wanted. Oh, don't your fate brought us together twice. And now it's given us a baby. 
and a future. We are going to have a baby. We're <laughs> I can't believe it. Beth, hey, Beth, what's the matter? Hey, Beth. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to our telethon to raise money for the victims of the Fifth Street Fire. I want to remind all of you, as you're making your pledges, or thinking about making your pledges by calling 555-WSPR, that when you make a pledge, Spalding Enterprises will match it five to one. That's right, five to one. And you can't beat those odds unless you are stealing. <laughs> okay, now all of you business tycoons out there, listen up. Now is your opportunity to make a really good contribution to a great cause. And I'm challenging you to see if you can top the biggest contribution made by a business so far to our telethon. And it is, oh, it's a whopper. It is from Lewis Oil, and it is $20,000. How about that? Mm -hmm. Woo! <laughs> you know, generosity of this magnitude certainly deserves to be recognized. Billy Lewis, come on down here and take a bow for us. Oh, no, no. Oh, come on, don't you be shy. Oh, he's right over here. Come on, let's get a shot of him. There we go, Billy Lewis. Yes, look at that. That is really, really wonderful what you did here. And, you That's know, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. Really up, he's it? certainly putting the screws to Roger. Yeah, he is, with a power driver. <laughs> Why don't you tell us just what inspired you to make such a big contribution? Well, uh, my daddy, H.B. Lewis, taught all his kids that the more you have, the more you give. That's why I can proudly say that Lewis Oil is taking steps to erect a permanent shelter for the homeless right here in Springfield. And we're starting with these folks who were burned out at the fire down on 5th Street. And the shelter is going to be built <clears throat> right next door to Spaulding's very own Waterview Towers. A permanent shelter, that sounds like a great idea. Yeah, I think it is. And we're kind of hoping that Spalding will join us in going that extra yard to help these needy people. And if they won't, why won't they? Well, well you know something? We, we have Mr. Roger Thorpe, the president of Spalding Enterprises, over here somewhere. Where are you, Roger? There you are. Roger Thorpe, come on over here. Let's right. get this shelter going. Come on. Right out of the shadows here. How so about it? So see you. <laughs> <coughs> Well, Roger, how about this shelter idea, huh? Darling, I hope your machine is taping this. It's moments like these that make life worth living. reason why we chose that location to build Waterview Towers. It's also, I might add, the reason we are sponsoring this telethon. Well, it sounds like Spalding's behind our project 100%. And I think that's good because we're all going to be neighbors. <laughs> oh, isn't that beautiful, ladies and gentlemen? I think it's downright poetic. Don't you, Roger? Billy is really something, isn't he? I don't know what we'd do without him. Neither do I. Billy. Oh, folks, I I'd like to, uh, excuse me, I'd like to introduce you to somebody who can tell you firsthand what this shelter will mean to the people down on Fifth Street. Ruth! Come on down here for a sec. Come on, you, you come on, come on, come on. Careful, careful. Ladies and gentlemen of Springfield, I'd like you to meet Ms. Ruth Price. She's talking there. Look, right out there. Oh. I was raised in uh, <laughs> to think that only preachers and politicians got people to listen to them. Uh, but now that I'm on the TV, I might as well make the most of it. I've lived in Springfield all my life. And never have I seen so much good come from so many people. And I want to thank you. Thank you for all of, all of you helping us who were in that horrible, awful fire. You know, for the longest time, we thought nobody cared about us, but we were wrong. This telephone proves it. And the idea of the shelter, <laughs> Lord knows our neighborhood can use that especially for the children, for their safety, for their walk, for the well, <laughs> thank you again for everything. And God bless you all. <laughs> Isn't it just beautiful when people come together for a good cause? Billy, 
see. What are we going to do? In the door. All the way in the corner. Hello, Vanessa. Watch out. The troops are coming. In the corner. All the way. All the way. There we go. Here we go. Get in Camp. Camp. Huh? I don't know what you're up to, but it better be good and it better be faster. Look, man. Just chill out. Me and the plastic. You got everything worked out, right? No! Camp, this isn't funny. Oh, no, look. No, relax. I, I got it all figured out. It's going to be okay. All right, come on, let's huddle up. Oh, get Johnny, over here. Johnny, relax. If I were a gambling yeah, girl, I'd say that man can pull this little see. thing off. One, two, oh, the kids just love him. Yeah, something tells me they're not the only ones. Oh, Johnny, get real. Come on. <laughs> I'd I thought I saw you come up here. Who's running the uh, telethon? Oh, Rick and Wanda, they're doing the Lombada, which gives us a chance to talk. Well, it's been a long, hard day. I actually don't feel like talking. Fine, then just listen. Excuse me? I want you to leave Billy alone. Where is this coming from? It's coming from here. You have hurt Billy time and time again. He was never happy with you, but he is happy with me. We have fun together. In fact, I see a future for us together. If you will just leave him alone. Nadine, we are not having this conversation. Not now, not ever. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Vanessa. They love me. Rick, what are you doing up here? Why aren't you all oh, here with Wanda? Just Wanda? relax. They're doing live interviews at Fifth Street. They'll need you in a couple minutes. Look, Wanda does this Elmer Fudd thing. Fine, fine, do fine, fun, fine, fun. fine, thanks. <sighs> Oh, so far, so good, good huh? Yeah, so far, so good. Well, Frank's keeping close tabs on Chelsea, that's what matters. We well, yeah, especially with Dana on the loose. Well, I'm not worried. You know, with all the security around the place, Dana's not going to come around here. That's going to be... Well, Downstairs to that studio with me, and you're gonna tell them all what you did. No, I'm not. They're all there. Chelsea, Johnny, Frank, Rick. Let's not forget Rick. Shut up! You're gonna see how it feels to have everybody that you love look at you like a dirt. It feels bad, right? Real bad, but you're gonna know that soon enough. You're pathetic, Dana. And you're stupid, too. Why would anyone believe you? Because it's the truth. No. See, they think you're a psycho. Yeah, that really helped me a lot. I had to put it on you. Nothing's changed. It hasn't changed. Yes, no, my dad, it hasn't changed. I believe you. You're lying. I followed you all day today. I saw you steal that from Frank's garage trying to pin it on me. I even took pictures of you. See? I even know why you did it. I know all about Bobby. Stop it! Oh. with part two of Guiding Light in a moment. Wyatt's putting APB out on her. All right, well, I just wish I could get a hold of Ray and tell her about all this. 
Well, maybe you should take the phone off the hook so she can get some sleep. Yeah, well, um, I need to run to the little girl's room. Oh, okay, well, I'll let you do that. But listen, I checked out the bathrooms and everything is okay. And there's a guard out in the hall, okay, so yeah, yeah, it'll be safe. Would you uh, man the phones for me, Ronnie? No, sure. Okay, yeah. Uh, telephone. No, it's fine. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for standing in for me, Vanessa. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. You really are an excellent spokesperson. Maybe you'd like to take on some PR duties in addition to Middle East development. Well, that's up to you now, isn't it? At least for now. Okay. Would you like to bet which one of us is going to last longer at Spalding? No, thank you. My father told me it isn't smart to bet right. with men like you. I'm glad your daddy learned something from his troubles. My father has more intelligence in one of his brain cells than you do. You have it all, but you... But what, Vanessa? Nothing. I've always been a good team player. I see no reason for that to change now. Unless, of course, you do.
Okay, we're safe now. kind of pledge means everything. <laughs> Thank you again. I'd appreciate it if you'd knock before you enter my office. You know, you don't seem too surprised that I'm your mystery partner. That's because I know you, Roger. Oh, so nothing I do can surprise you. Huh? <laughs> the only thing that surprises me is that it took you so long to stage your comeback. Of course, it takes people a long time to forget the things you did. If they ever forget. Yeah, but you don't care about that. Mm -hmm. Back in your hometown. Everybody hates you. You got a foothold again. Well, no. You did better than that. You're king of the mountain now. Congratulations. Thanks. I worked very hard for everything I got. I paid my dues and I've been rewarded. It's the American way. Mm -hmm. That's a nice touch. Hiding behind the American flag. Oh no, Holly. My running days are over. It's business, pure and simple. Don't take it so personally. It's a marriage to Alexander? Business? No. Alexander and I are good for each other. I care about her. She's an amazing woman. And she is the only person in this whole stinking town who believed in me. Her mistake. Alex and I are going to be happy together. So, you got just about everything you want now. your lunch money how old are you seven years old well that is very sweet and we thank you you know if everybody in springfield donated two dollars we'd have just a whole bunch of money thank you so much oh 
Hi, Audrey. Hi. Uh, do you have a doctor? That's our Dr. No. Rick Barlow for you. Now, folks, we're going to bring you that very special treat that we talked about earlier. Our own handsome speak, former New Orleans Saints football star is here. And you know what? He pulled a new bag out of his bag of tricks. He's turned talent coordinator on us. And, well, Hamp, I'll tell you what. With your special guest, I'm going to let you introduce all of them. So take it away, Hamp. Okay. Whoa, come back. <laughs> Let's do it. Come on. Ready? Great. All right. Hi, everybody. I'm Hampton Speaks, and I'm here with some very good friends of mine who lost their homes in the fire on Fifth Street. Um, and instead of me sitting around and telling you what it's about, I want you to hear it from them, okay? Case, how you feeling? Fine. Okay, we want you to start, all right? Tell, um, tell everybody where you live now. In the basement of our church. Well, how is it? It's okay. It's kind of cold, and there ain't much light. But the peaches were real nice to us. They're, they don't have a kitchen, so what we mostly eat is sandwiches and cold stuff. Yeah. Well, tell me, um, are your parents trying to find a new place for you to live? It's just my mama and me. She has, she's been looking for an apartment, but she hasn't found anything that we can afford. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. We're going to do something about that tonight, okay? All right. Uh, now I want you to meet Juanita. Juanita, tell us where you live now. We need gym at school, but we have to leave during the day because they use it for gym class. For gym class? That means uh, you got to move all your stuff in and out all the time. It must be kind of tough, huh? We don't have much stuff left. You get used to it after a while. Yeah, we're going to fix it, all right? Now I want you to meet Jimmy. Jimmy, how are you feeling? Fine. Okay, I want you to tell everybody where you live now. We got lucky. We're living with my aunt, but we got to leave soon because she's having a baby. She's having a baby? Jimmy's been helping his parents. You want to tell him about it? I got a job collecting empty bottles. It doesn't pay much, but Dad says every little bit helps. Yeah. Every little bit helps. You hear that, people? Right, Sally? Right. Oh. Rick, come. Yeah, like, tell us in Chelsea where you live. Not lady, where'd she go? Yeah. I don't know. You have to find her. Okay. Thank you very much. Someone told me you're a doctor. Mm -hmm. What is it? What's wrong? Mr. Cooper, yeah. I already called an ambulance, but you two guys better come. What, what, what's wrong? A girl's been shot out in the oh. stairwell. Okay. Okay. Hey, Chelsea. Hey, Come on. 